Thank you very much, Karen, for that introduction. Okay, so this study attempts to address the question, answer the question, what caused nitrate contamination in my well and by how much? The goal of this study was to determine the percent contribution of four nitrate sources to overall nitrate in private domestic wells by use of a statistical Bayesian mixing model. So first I'll go over just the general nitrate problem and project area. Um, the isotopic and elemental tracers that we used, we used three isotopes and one element. The location of our study wells, the statistical approach, I'm not going to go off into the weeds of this, the Bayesian approach, but I'll describe the, the general idea and some quick results and conclusions. So here's a nice schematic of the nitrogen cycle. We've already seen this before. Daniel um, did a good, it had a good description. The important thing to remember here is that nitrate, as many of us are familiar, is naturally occurring form of nitrogen. The problem arises when manure or fertilizers applied to the surface cause a buildup of nitrogen in the system, and much of that gets converted to nitrate, which leaches to groundwater. Domestic wastewater, as has been mentioned in previous talks, from septic sources or um, wastewater treatment plants can also be another source in areas where we have densely located septic systems or even a direct path from a single system to a well. And natural sources are another potential um, con contributor, but in a minimal amount. So my study focuses on private domestic wells located in the Central Valley of California. This is an area of very intensive agricultural farming and very many dairies. There's over 2,000 dairies and 7 million acres of irrigated cropland. And the, there, one estimate, a recent estimate by the USGS, um, they estimated over 90,000 private domestic wells in, are located in the Central Valley. So these are um, just individual wells on a household where it's typically serving a single family. What I'm showing here is a compilation of about 2,800 private domestic wells and nitrate measurement from a handful of different sources, the USGS, county data, a study that is um, part of the study that I'm talking about today where we sample 200 domestic wells. And this is the median nitrate value in the well over the past 15 years. Not all of these were sampled multiple times, but many were as a part of various programs. And approximately 30% of these wells did not meet the federal drinking water standard for nitrate. That's a federal level. The private domestic wells in California are not regulated, but the guideline um, for the drinking water standard is 10 milligrams per liter nitrate as nitrogen. So these people are personally responsible to find a, another source of water or treat the water themselves. And for testing and analyzing the results, understanding it, uh, many of these people aren't are aware that they have a problem. So it's a very large scale problem as many of us are already aware and there are some negative health effects. Um, so I didn't describe but the red, the black um, are above 50 milligrams per liter nitrate nitrogen so that's five times the drinking water standard and then orange is 25 so that two and a half times yellow is 10 so Anything yellow, orange, or black on this diagram is an exceedance of the drinking water standard. So quite a few wells. And um, as we've seen in other talks, there's quite a bit of finger pointing that goes on here. What caused nitrate contamination in my well? Where, where is this coming from? Who should we be regulating? And, and so on. So one way to start to get at the answers to that question is with isotopic tracers. The most common, not surprisingly, tracer for a nitrate is nitrogen and oxygen isotopes of nitrate. So what I'm showing here on the y-axis is the oxygen isotope of nitrate and then the nitrogen isotope of nitrate on the x-axis. And the boxes just show the ranges of values um, that I pulled from the literature for the various sources. So we have manure and septic waste there in the brown on the right side, and then ammonium fertilizer. Nitrate fertilizer kind of stands out because of a higher um, oxygen isotope value. 
and natural sources fall right in the middle. And one thing to really notice here is that there's quite a bit of overlap between these two and quite a bit of variability within a single source. And another thing with manure and septic waste is we really can't tell the difference. So is it from, is it from people or from animals? We really can't tell with, the, with nitrogen and oxygen isotopes. And then another potential complication with these isotopes is that denitrification can obscure the signal that we're measuring. So boron isotopes have the ability to help us distinguish between human and animal sources. Boron is known as a co-migrating tracer, so it's not found in um, nitrate fertilizers, but it can be um, it can be in the various sources and then co-leach along with nitrate. And D11B, the boron isotope, is generally distinct for septic and manure. And this is because of the incorporation of sodium perborate, or also known as borax, in many household products, and mostly powder detergents. But just the other day, I was using a lotion, and I happened to notice the ingredients had sodium perborate. It said borax right on there. So it's in a lot of cleaners and personal care products. And that has a characteristically low isotopic signature that remains intact through the wastewater treatment process. It's not obscured by denitrification. We can have some fractionation from geological processes or from absorption to clay minerals, but we don't expect this to have a major effect in our study area. So here I show the, just the general ranges, and this is pulled from a handful of, of, literature, um, of literature studies that so I just show the manure has a much higher signature, and then septic has a much lower signature, the D11B on the y-axis. And then this is against the nitrate, the nitrogen isotope of nitrate. And the fourth tracer that we used was iodine. It's not a commonly used tracer, but it is a good potential tracer of nitrate because it's commonly used on dairies as a disinfection, for disinfection, and before the cows go into the milk barn, they apply it to the udders, and then it ends up in the wash water and the lagoon, it's applied to the field, so that's another co-migrating tracer with nitrate. Very low concentrations found naturally in non-marine influenced groundwater, and also in um, very low concentrations in fertilizers. And it's also a tracer for septic waste because it is found in human waste uh, just through our diets. We're intaking iodine, but much lower concentrations than found in dairy waste. So here I'm showing um, the top histogram. Is m these, uh, this is iodine measurements from dairy monitoring wells that we have on dairies. And these, this is up to 360 micrograms per liter. And the other two septic and synthetic fertilizer, this is a different scale. So it only goes up to 50 here. So we have more of in the tens. For cattle manure, you can have lower concentrations of iodine, but a high concentration is definitely an indicator of a dairy, dairy source. Okay, so finally getting to our study wells. This, these wells were part of a larger study that were sampled originally in 2010, 2011. At that time, we analyzed for the nitrogen oxygen isotopes of nitrate, boron, which was not used as a tracer, and iodine, which was used as a tracer. And then I hand-selected wells that, had, that did not meet the drinking water standard for nitrate for this study, where we also had the, the, a measurement for each of the other tracers for boron isotope analysis. So we ended up with 56 wells total that we had some stored sample water where we were able to later analyze for boron isotopes. So we had that water saved for about four years before we um, analyzed the boron isotopes. So we have two separate project areas. One is in the north, more of the northern San Joaquin Central Valley of um, San Juan Merced County and then a more southern region, Tulare and Kings County.
Okay, so as I mentioned before, this is a statistical mixing model, and it's a Bayesian model. I'll go over that in one minute, but this, these are just the typical mixing model equations. This says that the amount of the tracer measured in the well equals the sum of the fractional contribution of each of the four sources. So we have manure, septic waste, fertilizer, and natural sources times the amount found in each of those four sources. So F source is what we're trying to estimate. And what is typically done with a deterministic mixing model is that just a mean value is inserted here for the estimate of the concentration in the source. But what makes the study different is it's a Bayesian mixing model. So as a, instead of a single value here, we're able to incorporate an entire probability distribution. So we can take into account all the variability and all the potential values that may be in that source. And that's, the, that's done for each of the four sources and the, the probability distributions do not need to be the same. So this, this gives you a way to incorporate all of the variability out there and the potential values. So each parameter is a probability distribution. So what we're estimating, we get back probability distributions as well. So we automatically have a way to estimate uncertainty. So the first thing that you need to do for a model of this type is characterize your sources, the tracer in each source. So we have 16, char 16 characterizations that need to be done. So for four sources and four tracers or four tracers and four sources. And so here I'm just showing the nitrogen isotope. And so we have a graph for each of the four sources, cattle manure, septic waste, synthetic fertilizer, and natural sources. So what's input to the model is the probability distribution is the purple line. And that was estimated based on literature values or our dairy monitoring wells. So we were lucky in that we have lots of data from dairy monitoring wells. And so the cattle manure source, that's actual measured data from wells in the Central Valley. But for the rest of the sources, this is estimated based on the literature. So green bars are what I pulled from the literature from monitoring wells. And then we assign a probability distribution based on those values that goes into the model. And these are called um, in Bayesian statistics, this is known as a prior probability distribution, and this represents our current state of knowledge of the concentration of the tracer in the source. And another thing to note is that the variance that you give on this, so the spread of your probability distribution, that it indicates your, your certainty. So you can give it a wide variance and give the model a lot of flexibility, or you can really ratchet the variance down and be more rigid in your in your estimates. And a further constraint is that we, we, we told the model that every source, every, or that the sum of all the sources, the fractional contribution has to sum to one. And we gave each of the sources at the same starting point. So for manure, septic, and fertilizer, there's a mean value that was assigned to each source of 0.3. And then for natural is 0.1. So we know that that's going to have a lesser contribution. So this is an unbiased mean starting value. And that was done with a special probability distribution called a Dirichlet distribution. And this was actually given a low variance. So we required a lot of evidence of the tracers in order to move the estimates away from this initial assignment. So here are what the results look like because Again, because this is a Bayesian model, we get out a probability distribution. These are 95% confidence intervals on the fractional contribution of each of four sources to each well. So the, the lines are kind of thin, but you have manure on the top, septic, fertilizer, and natural for each well. And I'm not showing all of the wells here. This is just a selection of some of the output. But the manure source was right away the most distinguishable. And for the other three sources, there's a lot more overlap. And the dot is the mean, the median value. And so the y-axis here is, or the x-axis here is the fractional contribution. So you can see that for a lot of these, there, 
the estimate expands the full range of zero to one nearly. So we have a lot less certainty for some sources for some wells. It just depends on the evidence that was available in the tracers. So for some, we do have right away is a clear manure signature, and those usually had high iodine, high G15N, um, high G11B. And then the septic and the fertilizer source were, in general, very, they had a lot of overlap. They were a lot harder to distinguish. And we're kind of hypothesizing this is due to applications of ammonium fertilizer, which really obscures the signature that we're able to see from septic waste. I had some arrows here popping up, so they're just color-coded. And so this is done on a per-well basis. And natural sources have a, a higher relative contribution for wells that had a lower nitrate value to start with, so around 10. If natural sources can contribute up to 4 milligrams per liter, they're going to automatically have a higher estimate. And right away, I'll rush through this really quick. This is kind of the key takeaway from this, is that we did see some regional patterns right away. So this is the, um, the normalized central tendency of each of those credibility intervals or confidence intervals normalized by well. So you can think of this as like a mean value. And we we're able to plot these nice pie charts color-coded. So the, the, um, the brown is the manure. And then green is fertilizer, yellow is septic, and blue is natural. And I'd like to point out this big swath of a large manure source here near Hillmar and Turlock, where we have a very dense dairy farming, many dairy corrals and lagoons. And then down south near Rosai and Wood Lake and on the eastern side of Tulare County, we, have, we see much higher contribution of fertilizer. And most of these wells, if you just look at the a circle surrounding the well, they have over 50% citrus and subtropical tree crops surrounding them. And then the high contributions of septic waste tend to be, is it still on? Okay. High, high contributions of septic waste tend to be on the outskirts of major cities. So where you have very dense um, dairy, or very dense septic communities, communities on septic systems. And the natural is kind of scattered. So key takeaway messages, this, this method is a, able to account for the natural variability that occurs within these sources and sum it all up in a, in a nice way. And the manure source for this study for these particular wells in this particular set of tracers was the most distinguishable septic and fertilizer less so but for some wells, one or the other did stand out. And regional patterns were very apparent and consistent with land use for the most part. This has the potential to inform some of these regulatory decisions we've, we've been talking about with all of the finger pointing that can be going on or trying to decide where nitrate's coming from. This just shows that there could be a lot of mixing or it's still, even with all this chemical data and fancy isotopes, it's still really hard to tell exactly where it's coming from. And it's a pretty adaptable method, so you can apply this to another region, you can change sources, you can use different um, tracers, it, it just as long as you can characterize it, then um, this it's a pretty, pretty practical or adaptable method. So. I'd like to um, quickly, just quickly thank all of my collaborators. This is a huge collaborative effort. So thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, Catherine. Questions? Quick questions. Thanks for your presentation. I I uh, could, couldn't help but notice uh, a higher concentration of data points on that pie graph uh, slide in the Hillmar area. And I was wondering if you had had a chance to at least preliminarily look at some more data down in the Tulare area. Those contributions seem counterintuitive to me. There's quite a bit of dairies in the Tulare area. So one, one problem we had with this study is 
finding people to participate and has been pointed out in other talks people are afraid of litigation or their property value decreasing somehow so we really couldn't pick and choose where we were able to sample wells we were completely limited by people that were willing to participate so the Kings County area we had a really hard time um, finding anybody that that would participate so we we're kind of limited there um, we do have wells that we sampled there but they either didn't they didn't have high nitrate so um, for this particular study I didn't analyze a boron isotope for those